So the video starts with a picture of a nice shiny restored mill, but it wasn't always like that. How am I going to get that thing off my ute? That was the easy part. Look at this guy here. So I was really fortunate. I got a call a couple of weeks ago from a guy who watches my videos and uh, this was surplus to his needs. He's in Adelaide, I'm in Townsville, so some many thousand kilometres away. Uh, he said, would you like it? All you need to do is transport it up to your place. You can have it for free. Um, so I said, why not? It's a milling machine. It's a drill mill. It's a round column. Um, it's made in 1987, I think it is. And uh, it's as heavy as hell. I slung it from the roof to get it off the back of my ute just yesterday. And I was a bit panicky about that. But uh, it all went okay. I took the motor off. So I'm going to restore this thing here. And, and uh, it's going to take a lot of work to get it back up. And I'll, I'll give you a closer look at it. The original motor here is a 415 volt, 1.5 kilowatt motor. It's uh, three phase, and I don't have three phase in my shed, so I could either go a VFD um, or a single phase motor, and the VFD option I was pricing up and uh, really, really too expensive, so I ended up going with the single phase option in the end. Look at this beautiful, filthy thing. Yeah, beautiful, filthy thing. So that shaft is out. This part was quite worrisome. You see a lot of surface rust on that shaft there and the uh, the milling head there was stuck on it and uh, I couldn't lift it off. 
I ended up using a wedge to try and prise open the milling head at the back there and that seemed to work and then it's all of a sudden it released and took me a little bit by surprise I was just worried that I was gonna damage something See if I'm missing a circlet, this guy. So I spent the better part of two days in that bucket there doing scrubbing and cleaning. I just used some degreaser there and it uh, wasn't a pleasant experience but uh, needed to be done. And uh, there's, a lot of the grease was baked and caked on. It was terrible. That's one of the lead screws and nuts uh, off for one of the axes and you can see there's a bit of backlash there so uh, I guess that uh, that's an adjustment there that I'm taking up to see if I can remove some of that backlash and of course in the middle of the thread middle of that uh, lead screw was uh, probably where most of the wear is and it still does have a bit of backlash in it so uh, I might have to replace those nuts With these um, these bolts here I really don't want to waste them there they're a bit rusty but they're fine. I'll, what I'll do is I'll just clean them up and probably try and blue them and put them back in again. I'm in for a job here. The liquid I'm using there is a bit of diluted citric acid. You can use it in your coffee machine to descale it. It seems to help attack that rust and make the job marginally easier and brightens the steel. Yeah, filthy thing.
clean these bearings uh, so I can inspect them to ch check them for wear but I ended up finding little metal filings inside those and once I saw those um, basically they're going to be discarded and uh, there I, I talk about some of the wear that you can see on those bearing outers and you have a corresponding wear on the inners and for the price of new bearings you just put new ones in that's what I did might be hard to tell but in this bearing outer the outer race is some very faint lines um, so that's you can you can see the wear on the top and the bottom the shiny parts and nothing in the middle there that corresponds with the the wear that you can see on the inner race there the rollers and so for 11 bucks new new bearings I'll put some new bearings in A filthy bugger. Much nicer. Okay, got some bearings here. I'm gonna pack these with grease. These are brand new bearings. So about ready to go in. So put a bit of grease in my hand. And so you got the uh, the conical side, so you put the wider side, and I'm aiming for this lip around the outside there, and to scoop up a little bit of grease. I'm going around in a circle. You see the grease starting to come through, I'll focus the camera, get the camera all covered in grease in a second. Gonna make sure you've got grease in 360 degrees. Sort of easy to miss a spot. Grease is coming through. To help those bearing outers go in, I heat up the, the shaft there and then I put the outer race inside the deep freezer, let it sit in there, cool right down, and therefore shrink, and it just helps it to uh, to slide in a bit easier. Don't put enamel thinners in yogurt cups. Damn it. Ding and ding. Use a bit of paste wax on the shaft here and just to protect it, look after it. Yeah, big beautiful thing.
Well, the chrome has basically disappeared off this, but uh, what do you do about it? Nothing. It's still perfectly functional. So, yeah, there it goes. Just have to keep it greased. So just an important note, whilst we're pressing in bearings, you only want to press on this outer race here. If you press on that, you're going to damage the inner inner bearings in here. You're forcing everything via the bearing, the conical bearings in there. Only press on this outer surface there. So I, what I've got, where is it? I've got this little sucker here. It's from a bearing pushing kit, and that sits flush. I've just got him just started in there. If you haven't got one of these kits, you can use bolts and plates of steel and big washers, etc. I don't know if I can handle this. You filthy animal. I can see that I'm going to have to work the surface quite a lot, break up the layers of scale. Crap, a filthy animal.
Well, it's better than what it was. Man, oh man. Ha <laughs> ha you beautiful thing. and push that dent out from the inside, see how it goes. There shall be no bog. Twenty two millimeter shaft, twenty four millimeter shaft. Twenty one point nine six. It's a little bit precarious. It's going to take ten thou at a time. That's bored out now, that's good. Now my second challenge is to make this keyway wider. It needs to be eight millimeters wide. This, my dear friends, is an ordinary woodworking chisel. A scabby one. Haha, <laughs> shoot me now. Go on, thumbs down, go on. And besides ruining this perfectly good pulley, what's the worst that can happen?
pulleys are all super grotty. I'm going to use the vacuum cleaner and the lathe and clean them up with some Scotch Brite. Now that's a tapered shaft, so it's got to be dry, best of my knowledge. Almost the same width. So the mill didn't come with the uh, with the collet, so I got the ER32 collet MT3 taper. So and it didn't come with the draw bar. So I'm going to use a bit of threaded rod, high tensile threaded rod. I've just got to cut it down to size. So there you go, there's uh, only what's left is for me to enjoy myself on the machine and learn how to use its capabilities and, uh, and slowly build up an arsenal of tools to, to support its capability. Um, I want to say once again uh, thanks to the very kind gentleman down in Adelaide who offered me the machine. I hope I've done it justice. Thank you for watching this video and uh, if you've got any comments, chuck them in the uh, comments and I'll uh, see if I can get to those. I really appreciate your support and particularly my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support and we'll see you in the next one.